Hello everyone. Today, I will introduce a paper called Dr. Tuvect, Dynamic Doctor Representation Learning for Clinical Trial Recruitment. This is a work published in AAAI 2020, and it's done by uh, Sidar Biswar, Danny Kasial, Lucas Glass, Elizabeth uh, Mukovitz, and myself. So the key task here is, given a trial and the trial description, can you find the right clinicians or clinical sites to run the trial. Here's some background. And most of the AI in healthcare focus on modeling patients, right? modeling patient record, building patient embedding. Actually, doctors also play a pretty important role in healthcare. In fact, all those interaction between patients and clinical trials often goes through doctors. So it's important to model doctors for clinical, clinical trial site selection tests. The way we approach this problem is we represent doctor as collection of the patient that visiting the doctors, as well as some other information that doctor has, such as doctor specialties and location and experience, years of practice and so on. And then on the other side, we want to match to trials. So trial has uh, some unstructured text description, describe the trial, and also some categorical features, such as uh, what disease, what phase of the trial, and what companies, uh, pharmaceutical company doing the trial, and uh, an intervention mechanism, and so on. So the challenge to learn a doctor representation in this case is twofold. One is, we have to model the doctor's experience as some kind of time evolving patterns because there are patients coming to see doctor over times, then the patient visits are documented as electronic health records and those collection of records becomes doctor's experience and that experience is evolving over time. And second, would you want to capture this dynamic representation based on the corresponding trial because this doctor may be a special a specialty in certain areas, such as oncology, but uh, in a different, completely different disease area, disease areas, this doctor is no longer uh, relevant. So we want to capture um, this kind of dynamic representation based on the trial information, right? depending on what trial you're trying to run, and the ranking and the experience of a doctor will be updated as well. So to tackle this two challenges, on the time evolving part, we want to uh, learn patient embedding and store those embedding as memories into a memory network and using a retrieval mechanism to learn a, a dynamic uh, doctor representation. And on the other side, it's also related to learn this dynamic representation, we use the trial embedding as a query and to query this memory network to uh, dynamically fetch and uh, combine a set of relevant patients, and then uh, that becomes the doctor representation for this particular query. So that's a kind of high level idea. Next, I will give a more detailed overview of the method. So here is the architecture of the entire model. It has a few different components. We'll talk about them uh, one by one in the next few slides. And But uh, overall, we have this patient embedding module. So that will take the patient records and uh, convert that into a vector representation of the patient that will be subsequently used to represent the doctors. Uh, and then on the other side, we have the trial information, right? uh, trial descriptions and, and other categorical information. Those will also be embedded into a query vector because we we'll use this query vectors to query against this underlying memory network. So we use, uh, we, uh, then we also construct this dynamic doctor memory network and all those memories are the historical patient representation that doctor has seen. Then we're using this query that's come from the trial information to figure out what will be appropriate doctor representation for this particular trial. And then finally, we have uh, combined with some static uh, doctor information, then uh, make a prediction at the end, like enrollment rate for this doctor for this particular trial. Next, let's talk about those individual components in the patient embedding. The patient embedding is a pretty standard steps that 
most of the patient representation learning have introduced something similar to this. And uh, the input is uh, patient those structured medical codes that visit by visit, patient will have a different diagnosis, a medication procedure code. We use those codes and construct a uh, multi-dimensional um, binary vectors. So the vector, the value of one indicate the specific code uh, is present. For example, uh, diabetes is present in this record and, and some other disease. So that will be the input uh, representation, VT, uh, for patient K at time T. Then go through this embedding, we'll uh, find a latent embedding HT for patient K. Then we have those patient embed visit embedding, HT, K. Then we want to somehow combine them uh, to come up with a single embedding vector for the entire patient. So that's done through this uh, attention with uh, recurrent neural network module. So we use uh, the bidirectional LSTM to embed this visit by visit sequence of a, a given patient. Then we combine them, uh, we learn this uh, weight alpha one, alpha two, for two alpha t. Those are scalars values, tells us the importance of each visit. And once we have those important scores or attention weights, then we can finally combine them uh, with as a weighted sum of those underlying uh, embedding vector, HT. Uh, so, so that's the patient embedding. Next, we want to embed the trial information. So the trial information has some textual description of the trial and have some categorical information such as uh, what disease, what phase, and so on uh, for this trial is about. For the textual description, we first use a pre-trained uh, BERT model that trained on uh, uh, mimic text data to learn this uh, pre-trained uh, BERT model. And then we use that BERT model to apply on the uh, trial, clinical trial description information to give us the embedding for the description. Then we have a, a multi-layer perceptron to embed the categorical information. Then we combine them, and that gives us the, the query for the memory network. So this query represents the trial. So next, let's see how we construct this dynamic memory network and how the trial is used to query against this network. So we have this for memory network. It has a few modules like input, generalization, I mean, response, and output. So the input is those patient embedding. Right? So as I already mentioned earlier, each patient uh, have a we have mechanism to embed them into a vector. Then we put all those patient vectors, our patient embedding vectors, as a memory slot in this memory bank. Then we also have this. Uh, uh, Oh, by the way, those uh, patient embedding can be updated, right? Because uh, those patient embeddings are built with a uh, LSTM type of uh, model with attention. So you potentially can update them. If the patient have uh, new information, you can update those uh, patient embedding as well. And then we have the trial query vectors, which we have talked about in the previous slide. And then we use the query against all those memory slots, one for each patient, and um, to find out how good a match this query compared to this patient. And then we have this kind of uh, attention score. Then uh, this is just telling us how relevant each patient is to the trial, right? This maybe the first patient is very relevant, have a score of one. The second patient is pretty relevant, score 0 0.6. Third one, not that relevant, 0 0.2 and so on. So that's all the patients from uh, single doctors. Then the weighted sum of all this uh, patient embedding weighted by all this uh, attentional retrieval scores give us this dynamic representation of the doctors with respect to the query. Then we combine with static doctor information such as physician location, specialty area, and so on. That give us the complete doctor representation. Then we have a, a, a response module to make the final prediction, whether uh, what's the enrollment rate for this doc using this doctor or this site for, for serving this trial. Okay, so the final prediction is, um, uh, can be considered as a regression task. Um, so we can predict the enrollment rate of this doctor for this trial. So there's some score between zero and one, the higher the better. So it's uh, just um, kind of the, what we talked about, right? The one part is the output from the uh, dynamic memory network. One part is the concatenation of the static uh, 
doctor representation. In this particular setting, we also concatenate the, the query information, which is corresponding to the trial, and all three things together uh, go through a softmax uh, layer and give us the prediction. Uh, for as actually probably a sigma layer give us a prediction between zero and one. Then we can also uh, put those prediction score into different bucket, right, from zero to 20, uh, point two, point two to point four, and so on. So this become a classification task, and so this just give us uh, some kind of a, a way to evaluate this as a classification uh, later on. So that's the model. Uh, next, let's look at some experiments. So in the experiments, we want to answer two questions. One is Dr. Duvect, whether it has a better performance in terms of predicting clinical trial enrollment for supporting trial site selection. Then second question is, can the methods or Dr. Duvect perform better in some kind of transfer learning setting, such as transfer trials across countries or, or across diseases? And so we'll talk about them uh, next. First, some of the data uh, statistics. The data coming from our collaborator, Acuvia, and the trial data um, are about our trials coming from 2014 to 2019 across 28 countries. So over 2,600 trials over, I mean, it covers 25,000, close to 26,000 doctors or sites in this data set and the pair, right, doctor trial pair is over 100,000 right? and it covers 430,000 patients. And there's some statistic in terms of number of uh, visits uh, and number of code per visit and so on. So it's a very rich and large data set. Of course, all the trial have the trial description coming from uh, public available data uh, from clinicaltrial.gov. And we also have those patient data coming from the patient claims data. Next, uh, the metrics, we wanna evaluate the performance. Classification, we use uh, precision recall error end as a curve. And for regression task, we use R squared. Both are, are kind of a metric, the higher the better. In, term, in terms of baseline, we have compared a large number of different methods. Uh, the first one is the, just a median enrollment rate. So this is kind of a standard method that used in practice. When you consider or estimating a site performance, uh, usually, without much information, additional information, you will use the, the average or the medium enrollment rate for that particular therapeutic area as your guess for how good the site will be. Obviously, that will be a very weak baseline, uh, but again, it's, since it's a standard practice, we include it here. Then uh, we use a number of uh, different uh, standard machine learning classification method, and we uh, and it's also a different neural network methods such as uh, uh, MLP, LSTM, and there is another uh, paper called Deep Match that's also trying to match doctor to trials, but they only use the top 50 most frequent medical codes, so it can kind of limit it. Next, let's look at the main site selection prediction result, right? Uh, so in terms of both a PRAUC and R square, the higher the better, as I said. And overall, you can see that Dr. Tuvac uh, has a much higher performance in both measure and has um, relatively compared to the best baseline method, LSTM in this case, we achieve over 8.7% relative improvement and achieve um, over 80 six percent of uh, PRUC. A more interesting setting will be this transfer learning setup. When you go into a new area, a new countries, you don't know which doctor or which sites are promising, right? So uh, it'll be very important if the model can tell you accurately which site or which doctors are promising to run the trial. And with our methods, it, it become possible. So we, we have a uh, train our model, using uh, US data, then tested on uh, 47 trials from uh, South Africa during the same period of time. And you can see the performance is uh, very similar to the previous uh, site and that's achieved um, even higher relative improvement. I mean, 13 or close to 14% better uh, performance in PRUC comparing uh, LSTM and, uh, and also DeepMatch. Next, we also compare to uh, in a different setting where we have a rare and low prevalence diseases. In this case, uh, we have trained that, uh, I mean, we want to test the, tr uh, the model on 
uh, some rare conditions such as uh, IPF and uh, an IBD. So you can see the performance is uh, slightly worse than before, but still, relatively speaking, uh, much higher than all these different baselines. So in summary, uh, we have introduced this uh, method called Doctor to Vec. This is a, a mechanism to learn a doctor representation using memory network, leveraging all the patient information that the doctor have uh, seen and other aesthetic information about the doctors to support clinical trial size selection. And we have shown a uh, much stronger performance in the trials recruitment application. So if you're interested uh, in this paper, you can check out this uh, AAAI 2020 paper. Okay, thank you very much.